student. Boy, this was a vicious, vicious attack. Who broke a black female student's nose and uttered the N-word. I don't know how many times it was over and over and over and over again. Will not, not face hate crime charges. What else were they looking for here? Hmm. Her Atlanta Black Star, the 15-year-old white male student from Shawnee Mission East High School in Kansas City, Kansas, has been charged with felony aggravated battery in the Johnson County District Court after allegedly breaking his black female classmate's nose during that hallway fight we covered for you. Well, just the other day, yesterday, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. The picture is just scary as all get up, folks. Recap, the two sophomores had a tense altercation captured on video when the male student rushed down the hall screaming, what? N word, what? Right before he violently pushed Bree, the black student who responded with a right hook to his face. So I don't know if the deciding factor was that as he landed the punch, broke her nose, he didn't at that millisecond say the N word. It was just before. I'm not an attorney, I'm not a prosecutor. I'm just trying to figure out why. The community believes racism was, of course, at the center of the incident, particularly since right before the fight, as the Kansas City Defender reported, the black student was involved in another exchange with a white female student about her calling black students slaves. Kansas City Defender with the details here. Salt led protest locally. Students organized a school walkout in response to the incident. Students said they did not feel safe at the school and asserted that school administrators had not previously taken their concerns regarding racism on campus seriously. Young lady was the victim of a hate crime and it should be treated as such, said Anisha Jackson, a parent of a now graduated Shawnee Mission student, told the Kansas City Star. She was protecting herself essentially from videos I saw as she was being assaulted. I'm not sure why she got suspended. The mom also has been asking for officials to address the racism issue at the school. Wednesday. November 28th, an emergency review hearing was called regarding the now viral fight. And the male student was mandated to be held in custody. He will face charges as a minor. The teen whose name is being withheld because of his age has been in trouble before. He is currently facing charges including aggravated battery, aggravated assault and battery in a separate June case. According to court records, female student also faced a penalty for her part in the fight. Her parents say she was suspended for five days. The district has declined to provide details about its response to the incident or if any punishment measures were implemented. While we cannot share specific information about the incident or the district's response, district wants to reassure the community it takes proactive measures to create a safe educational environment where every student feels a sense of belonging. District spokesman David Smith had the nerve to say. Black Student Solidarity Network, a youth led organization formed in 2022. Amidst a surge of racial violence in Kansas and Missouri, has urged the district to expel the white student and issue a formal and public apology to the girl for suspecting her. Black students must have the right to defend themselves without fear of unjust punishment, group said in a social media post. I'm so sick of people, Jasmine. I'm, this has got to stop here. They are reactionary, okay? That's what this district is. Why do you need to have an emergency meeting? Because people were chanting outside your door, holding signs, demanding better of you. And suddenly have this emergency meeting, Yasmin, that, uh, oh, yeah, we are, yeah, we are going to hold them accountable. And I predict, I'm going to let you talk, but I predict it's not going to go down like this. Just because you charge somebody with all that or hold them accountable initially doesn't mean they ultimately will be. What say you? Yeah, these things don't happen in a vacuum. They don't just spring up out of nowhere, right? And it seems from the students' reactions that they had been kind of ringing the, you know, raising the flags about saying, you know, there's some racist kids in these schools. I don't feel safe in this school. Uh, and nothing was really done. And now we're here and now it's made national headlines. And now we're talking about it on this show. And now they're saying, oh, we got to do something, right? So the the concern was never really about the safety of the students. Maybe they were gaslighting the kids saying, oh, it's not really that serious. I don't know what was going on. But at the end of the day, what I would love to see is that kids just go to school and then they learn things and then they go out into the world and they're better people for it. Uh, I think right now the the whole climate across the country, you know, whether you're talking about like politically or socially or wherever that overlap happens, 
you know, a lot of times we see kids parent parroting what their parents are saying at home. Uh, they kind of learn a lot of their values and their understanding of the world through their parents and teachers and church members and things like that. But now we also have social media that's also playing a factor. That's yeah. playing a role in these things. And I wonder, and don't, you know, this is just me thinking out loud at this point, but I wonder if, you know, the kids, technology and social media move so quickly, right? We don't have the education as far as like the impact that things like TikTok and this, you know, like fast, mm -hmm. you know, quick content has on people's minds and the way that they think and the way that they understand things. And the teachers surely don't understand these things better than the kids. So who's there to help them navigate that space? So they're getting a lot of ideas from all over the place, may, may or may not be credible sources that they're consuming all the time. And then they're seeing a lot of things in the world and they really haven't been in the world for that long. So they're trying to like piece together a lot of things. And I don't know, now you see hate crimes in schools again. Yeah, that's what we're seeing here. And I will say this, that these students are learning. You said you wish they could go to school, learn and get out and be better people. I think that's what you said. They're learning to be violent, racist, okay? And they're learning when they get out, I suspect, if this continues to be better racist and more violent. I will tell you this, this has gotta be a story we follow up on and this is a story that we have to um, pay attention to. I would fire David Smith before I did anything else. Who is David Smith? That's well, a district spokesman who dared use, I think, a sinful phrase. Proactive measures. <laughs> the, if this is proactive, David, and I don't care if you're just the mouthpiece, I'd hate to see what happens when you just kind of sit back and chill. This is crazy. What's up is down, what's right is left, and this cannot continue.